You've just installed Amiga OS 3.2. I'm going to show you five things that you can do next after installing Amiga OS 3.2. All the links to the programs shown are in the description. And if you haven't installed Amiga OS 3.2 yet, I recommend that you check out my previous video first. I've added a PCO drive that points to a directory on my PC with all the downloaded files mentioned. So let's get on with it. Number one. LHA is a popular compression tool on the Amiga. A lot of programs come bundled in this format and it's a tool that doesn't come with Workbench sadly. So I highly recommend that you install it. So just get lha.run, double click on it and execute. And what it will do is extract to the folder that it's in already. Let's just do a window and then update and then we'll see the new files that it's just created. We're in an O20 processor uh, set up at the moment, so I'm going to use this one. If you know that you've got an O40 accelerator, then you need to use this version. If you're on an old Amiga 500 and it's a 68000 processor still, then you need to use this version. So I'm going to choose the O20 version because that's what I need. And then I'm going to open up my system folder show all files, uh, scroll to the C folder, then what I'm going to do is drag that LHA into that folder, do an update, scroll all the way over to the right and there you should see it there. We need to select it, go to icon and then rename and rename it to just LHA. Now when we open up a new shell, which you can do by going to uh, Workbench and then execute command, you can type in new shell and then you can type in LHA and there we go, we've got that installed. That's going to come in useful for the next step. Number two. Next is Directory Opus, which is a hadding tool for moving, copying and organising files. Now, if I double click on the LHA file, nothing happens. It says that there's no default tool that we can use. So what we're going to do for now is just execute a command shell again, go to new shell, and then make sure that we're in the PC directory. And then we're going to do LHA space X space D O. And then hopefully what you should be able to do is press the tab key. This will auto complete the file name for us, a very handy thing. And then we can finally complete it by entering in RAM colon. So basically what this is going to do, extract uh, the install files and everything into our RAM disk. There we go, we've got our dopus folder. And then we've got an install icon. Now you might be thinking if you've installed Workbench before an old version, you might be thinking, oh, I need to get install a package from Aminet. Don't worry, Amiga Workbench 3.2 comes with installer built in, so we can just go ahead and install. So you'll go to intermediate user. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put directory opus because it's going to make a folder called directory opus 4 already. I'm just going to select the tools folder and then click proceed. Do we want to scan hard drive for any outdated versions? Uh, no, nope, because I know that I haven't got this installed already. I don't need any additional languages. Obviously, if you do, you need to select them, click proceed. Then I'm going to choose English for the documentation and I don't want any auto start to uh, run at all. So that's that, that's installed. So uh, what one thing we need to do is reboot our Amiga after doing that. So I'm just going to do a control Amiga Amiga or control Windows key and Windows key. And we'll just wait for that to boot up again. There we go. And if I go into system, tools, I should have folder, yep, directory opus. And then if I move that there, there's the main icon for it. Double click on it and there's directory opus. Number three. Next is MUI38 user. 
Now this stands for Magic User Interface and it's kind of like a set of libraries in a way or framework. Highly popular and I recommend installing it on any workbench installation that you do. So uh, again we can't double click on it but what we can do is open up a new shell, type in new shell, we're in the PC directory and what we're going to do is LHX MUI do a tab to complete and then I'm going to do RAM colon and that will extract it out into my RAM disk. There we go, that's done. There we go, we can see we've got an MUI folder. I'm going to do install dash MUI, proceed, yes, proceed. And then it's going to say select a place where you want it to install. Now for some reason it never defaults to the system. So I'm going to put it into system. There we go and proceed. It will create a MUI folder in there automatically. Um, image sets, yeah, we'll just do proceed. English. And then it's got some example demonstration uh, or possibilities of MUI. You don't have to install this. I'm just going to click on no just to save a little bit of RAM. And then uh, click on proceed. There we go, MUI is now installed. Number four. Next we're going to install Picasso 96. This allows us to have a whole range of screen modes and gives us a lot more colors than the basic AGA chipset. First we need to go into the settings of WinUAE, so I press F12. And then in my setup, I just need to make sure that under RTG board, Go to the dash just there. Make sure that you're on UAE Zorro 3. 4 megabytes is fine, but I'm just going to add it up to 8. And then do a reset. So in Picasso, we can't double click on it, but if we open up a new shell, and then make sure we're in the PC directory. We're just going to again extract that so we can use tab to auto complete that. Go to RAM colon. That puts it all in the RAM disk. And then we're looking for Picasso 96 install. And then we double click on setup. Click on proceed. It's the first time install. Go choose intermediate. Go choose proceed and proceed. Proceed again, quite a few proceeds. Uh, no, we don't want to read the documentation. And then make sure that UAE GFX is selected. Click proceed. And then the libraries need to go into syslibs. Then monitor needs to go into sysdev monitors, PVS, and dev Picasso 96 settings. We can choose another folder for the support file, so because well, I haven't got a works directory, so I'll select another directory. Um, I'm just going to choose system, and then I will just put it in a folder called work. Do you want to have the application draw copied to the hard drive? Yes. Uh, want yes and then carry on with yes install the files yes proceed with the monitor driver yes Picasso mode yes Picasso mode yep yeah, proceed verbal setter yes PVS yes and proceed and proceed so there we go that's all now set up so if I do Control Amiga Amiga just to do a reboot. There we go, it's booted back up again. And if we go into system now, preferences, and look in screen modes, we should see a load more different screen modes. So uh, high res interlace is what we were on before, so 640 by 512. But now what I can do is actually do something like 640 by 512 but in 16-bit color instead. So if we try that and use that, 
there we go that mode is now set cast window size at the moment if we just have a look f12 and display yeah we're 720 by 568 so to make things nice and crisp i recommend that you find a resolution that's the same so 720 by 576 16-bit use that click on use and there we go that's nice and clear now so we're happy with that we can go back in and choose save our mouse has, has got really small, unfortunately, but that's a downside to um, RTG graphics. Hopefully, uh, if you know of a way to make uh, or the mouse cursor bigger, let me know in the comments below. Number five. And last but not least, the last program we're going to be installing is WHD Load, which is a very popular tool for playing games. I have a dedicated video all about this that I'll link up in the corner, but again, what we're going to do is be opening up a new shell not by typing new though what we're going to be doing is opening up a new shell then doing LHA X and then WHD load put that into the RAM open that up WHD load and there's an installer so just run that proceed we're going to leave it on the C folder, proceed, nice and quick, there we go, done. But there's an extra step, because WHD load needs a whole bunch of kickstarts. If you need more details, yeah, check out my in-depth video on WHD load, but basically we need to copy over these kickstarts. So specifically where we need to put them is in your system, devs, Kickstarts folder just needs to be dragged into there and then that's all done. Let's just do an update to make sure that it's all in there. And as you can see, there's our kickstarts. Well, that is five things to do after installing Amiga OS 3.2. Now, if you want to play a load of Amiga games using WHD load, I recommend that you check out this video next. Thanks for watching. Bye.